An influential business lobby group has called for the proposed high-speed rail project linking London with cities in northern England to be scrapped. The Institute of Directors, which represents business leaders, has described the £42 billion railway line as a grand folly. Well, the government says the HS2 project is set to generate huge economic benefits. Well, let's uh, speak now to Simon Walker, who is Director General of the IOD, who joins us live. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, your members were originally in favour of this. Now they're not. What, what's changed? They were marginally in favour. I think what's tipped them over has been the increase in costs from £30 billion to £50 billion, pounds, and who knows where it's going to stop. Um, I mean, we have to remember the original HS1 link to the Channel Tunnel was budgeted at £1 billion and ended up coming in at £11 billion, 11 times the original forecast. I mean, no one could be a little surprised that there's some fright about the way costs are increasing on this one. But uh, what is the sort of cost-benefit ratio here in terms of an ultimate cost? You know, 43 billion might go to 80. What is the cut-off point? I mean, have Labour called it right to say it's got to be done within budget, come what may? Well, I think, I, I think every, all government projects ought to be done within budget. That should, that should be a, sort of a given. Um, and the, the ease with which this, uh, this one is growing uh, seems crazy to me. Um, there was a fundamental miscalculation in the original thinking. Uh, they regarded time spent on trains as time that was completely wasted. Now, half our members say they spend all their time on a train working at a laptop computer or, or an iPad. But because these calculations were made 10 years ago, before laptops became kind of mainstream, uh, they didn't take that into account. So time spent on trains is not actually wasted for the sort of business people whom HS2 is aimed at. Uh, time on trains can be and is spent quite productively. So the cost-benefit analysis that was done that long ago is actually wrong inherently. Um, but we, we're alarmed as well about the escalating cost and where that could end up. The, the point is, it's an enormous amount of money. And Rod Eddington's report on transport five or six years ago talked about spending that sort of money on hundreds, if not a thousand, much smaller scale projects, electrification here, lengthening station platforms there, road bypasses as well, and quite a lot of road work. Um, so there's a lot else you could do with that amount of money. We're absolutely not against putting that money into transport infrastructure. Okay, it's just that High, high Speed 2 uh, Chief Executive says that, you know, smaller schemes lead to smaller benefits. Well, I, I think the benefits, the National Audit Office has actually suggested that the, the calculation of benefits on HS2, which is pretty modest, uh, is flawed itself. And we think there are these further reasons uh, why the calculations are mistaken. The, the cost-benefit analysis of HS2 is not very healthy. Uh, normal rail projects do an awful lot better uh, in terms of cost-benefit analysis than this one. Okay, Simon Walker, thank you very much indeed for joining us.